Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise for those of you who are new to the family. I post videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about God, Jesus, and expanding the kingdom of God. And today's video is going to be part one of a Q&A video that I'm going to be doing. I'm saying part one because I didn't post it up here here on um, YouTube and mentioned it. But I want to let you guys know if you have any questions that you want me to answer, be it personal, relating to Bible study, um, relating to the Christian lifestyle, or just personal, or my love life, or my son, or anything like that, just leave them down below in the comment section, and I'll get to those in a separate video. But this is going to be the first one based off the questions I um, got on Instagram, as well as previous questions I was asked here on YouTube. I have some written down, but I'm going to start off with the Instagram questions, and then the ones that I wrote down, because I can't go through all of the different pages and stuff so I'm not gonna mention names I don't know if you guys want me to so I'm just not gonna mention Instagram handles I'm sorry if you guys would like me to just let me know ahead of time um, when I do another video and I'll definitely mention them but I don't know just for privacy reasons I'm not gonna mention names um, but um okay so the first question is how do you break down for a new believer how to read and study the Bible so for me I know a lot of people when they when new, when there are new believers who want to start studying the Bible, they tell them to automatically go and to read the beginning of the Bible. I'm against that for the simple fact that I myself don't even understand it. I've read Genesis, Exodus, and Levit Levit Leviticus um, in full, and I didn't understand anything that was going on. I read it in multiple translations, and it just did not work for me. Um, as a kid, my mom would always tell me to read Psalms and Proverbs, which is amazing. I think Psalms and Proverbs are a great way to start. But um, I definitely would say if you're a new believer um, and you're ready to really dive into the Bible, study it, and read it, I would say start with the Gospel of John, not the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, or Luke. I would say do John and then Luke um, because John is just phenomenal. It really centers around the ministry of, um, of Christ. And um, I just think it's very, very profound, and it's just, I, I, I don't know how to explain it to you guys. It is phenomenal. I highly suggest, if you're a new believer, I would say start with the Gospel of John, and then you can do Psalms and Proverbs, because Psalms is all about, um, you know, joy and prayers and stuff like that, and Proverbs is about wisdom, but definitely the Gospel of John. Now, when picking a translation, I always recommend people getting two translations, because I feel like reading it in two translations is always easier to understand in the context of how it's written i would say get the king james version because i think that's an essential version to have not a lot of people understand it which is why i say get two versions definitely the king james version and if you want something that is easier to understand i would say the new king james or the esv now i have read from the hcsb as well as the nlt but my other two favorites would be the New King James as well as the English Standard Version, which is the ESV. So definitely get two translations of the Bible. Start with the Gospel of John, Psalms, and Proverbs. And um, understand that there is really a difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible. I can read the Bible all day, every day. I am a book nerd. A lot of people can just read. But when you're reading it, you're not really allowing the information that you're getting, the Word of God, to really dive into your heart versus when you're studying it you're pulling things out pulling out your observations really allowing yourself to take key things out to apply to your life so i hope that answered the question so that's how i would do that um the next question is what method do you use to take notes in your bible now you guys know i use a journaling bible this is the New King James Version Journal of the Word Bible from Thomas Nelson. It's in the teal hardcover, floral, teal floral hardcover with cloth material. Um, and the way I take my notes is literally like I'm journaling my notes. Um, I will, like if I find like something in the, in the scripture that's like a question that makes me ponder, I would say, you know, this is a great question, or do I do this? If there's something that gives examples, I would give examples of myself that relate to that scripture. Um, if it's a word that I want to define, I will define that word. I literally use it as a journal. Like, I literally use this as a complete journal. Defining words, taking notes. I just do it that way there are some people who follow a specific way um, I know a lot of people do the soap method 
there are multiple different methods to try. I've tried a ton of methods, but once I got into getting a journaling Bible, I started looking at it more of me journaling out my thoughts, me journaling what I'm pulling out, because then it allows me to really see what I'm getting out of the scripture and applying it to my life. So I hope that makes sense. I use my journaling Bible to literally just journal my thoughts as I read the scripture. And of course, I have other translations and study Bibles with me, so I will read those and pull out as need be. Um, I do have a study with me video up and also how I study the Bible, which you guys can check out. I'll leave those links below down down below in the bottom bar, and um, you can click the eye on the screen. But um, that's how I do it. The next question is, how do you discipline yourself for more prayer life? Okay. That's a hard one because I suck at prayer. I'm not even going to lie, you guys. Um, I completely suck at prayer. It wasn't until 2016 that I got serious about my prayer life. But even then, I was doing it every now and then. Um, I'm the type of person, like, I'm sorry, you guys. I don't know if there are any of you out there like me. But if I'm in the bed and I know I need to pray, I'm not going to get off the bed. I'm going to pray in the bed. But then I get tired. And I know that's bad. Um, I'm the type to pray in my mind. I don't like to pray out loud. I'm not the best when it comes to talking out loud. I got my prayer journal over there and I wanted to show you guys. So let me grab that real quick so I can show you guys. I was saying, I'm not a verbal prayer. I prefer to write my prayers out and I find that writing them out and then speaking out what I wrote helps me better my prayer life. Um, I pray in the morning, but it, it'll be more so like, you know, thank you God for waking me up this morning. Thank you for, you know, working limbs and organs. Thank you for just allowing me to live among the living. Something simple like that. Um, now, like a real hardcore prayer, I write in my prayer journal. I'm more of a writer. I am not best with verbally talking. I prefer to write out my thoughts, and that's just always been how I, you know, that's just how I am. So I have a prayer journal. I have a lot of notebooks and, you know, um, journals and stuff but I've been using this one out since 2016 I got this in March 2016 or April April 2016 I got this um, and I'm not that far along because I haven't been writing in it consistently like I'm supposed to like there will be large gaps in time where I will not write for months I won't write for weeks or days some days I will write con consistently like it's something that I have to force myself to do I know that sounds bad, but I find that when I force myself to do it for at least a few days, it becomes a habit. And then when I get in those moods of, I don't want to do this right now, it'll take me a long time to get into it. So for me, my prayer life is still something I'm working on, but um, I find it best to journal out my prayers and then speak what I journal because it helps me communicate with God, or at least I feel like I'm communicating with Him ten times better. So that's that um okay so that was the first set of questions i'm moving on to the next set okay okay how do you choose what to study for the for bible study and what highlighting code do you use okay how do i choose what to study honestly i have a list of things that i really want to study like i have topical studies um book studies that i want to do i have so many but when it comes to picking, I will pick out of the things that I've already written down that I know that I want to do. Like, I knew that I wanted to study. Actually, do I have it with me? I do. Let me just pull, see if I can pull it out. Where is it? Okay, so. I honestly don't remember when I did this. But I wrote down like Bible studies by book and then topical studies and word studies that I wanted to do. So like I had John, Romans, Ruth, Esther, James, Luke, Matthew, Mark, first and first, second, third, John, Psalms, Proverbs, Song of Songs, um, Isaiah, Ezekiel. Those are like the main ones that I wanted to study as far as book studies. And then topical ones, there was like Proverbs study one woman, love, fruit of the spirit, armor of God, fear, depression, prayer, faith, all that. Um so if I don't have an immediate jump from God to study something, I will pull out whatever list. This is like just two of the lists that I have. I have so many lists all over the place. And I will go through the list to pick something. Now, 
for about a month or two months now, I've been having this urge to study the book of Isaiah. I don't honestly know why, but I've had the urge to study it. So when I have, like, a major urge to study something specifically, that's when I know that is what I'm going to study next. But if it's like, okay, I finished this, what do I study? I will look at my list or I will just look at, you know, look up different things that I can study. So it's not a set kind of thing of how I pick what to study next. It's really whether I get an urge from God or if I don't, I just ponder around until something pops up at me. Um, but definitely the book of Isaiah as well as the armor of God from Ephesians are definitely something that I really, really highly recommend. Um, and those are not recommend, but highly want to study for myself. So that's pretty much how I go about it. And like when I'm watching other YouTube videos and things like that, I will write down like things that they're studying just to, you know, have a list of things that are ongoing. Now, I will be recreating these lists because when I say I have so many lists, I have... These two I have lists on my phone, I have lists somewhere on a notepad, I have one in my other journaling, um, faith journals, like, it's ridiculous how many lists I have, so, it really just depends. Um, like, I just found out this, um, other Instagrammer is doing a study on the women of the Bible, and she's going through the different women, I think she's done Hannah, Anna, she's done Elizabeth, um, there's another one, Dor Dorka, I'm probably pronouncing that name wrong but she's going through the women of the bible and i think that is phenomenal now that i want i want to do it as well so it's it's just things like that that really just it depends i mean i don't have a set thing um what highlighting code do you use now i use a ton of different ones because i have so many bibles and each bible has a specific kind of use so like in my journaling bible i don't use a specific highlighting code um just because it's a journaling bible and i just use the colors to make things pop and coordinate together now in my king james version study bible i use a personal code that i made up for myself in what what's, what's another one that I have in my HCSB study Bible I believe I use the good morning girls Bibles Bible Bible code yeah and it looks like this the Bible coloring chart from good morning girls so I use that in my HCSB study Bible in my NLT Bible I use um, just this regular Bible color code that I found on Instagram that I thought was cool that I use it for. So honestly, I use a different kind of system because I have a different system from each Bible. So it really depends on the Bible. Um, but if you guys want to know my top ones, I definitely would say um, the Good Morning Girls. What is it? Good Morning Girls Bible color code. That one is amazing. I really like that. Um, my own personal one is the one that I use, and then the other one I use is one that I found, I think her name is Amy Hell, on Instagram, as well as Tanya Andrews on Instagram. I think they use the same kind of code, um, but that's the code that I use. I'll leave those links down below for you guys to check out those codes that I'm talking about. But, um, yeah, I use a bunch of different highlighting codes, and um, I'm actually going to do a video on Bible color coding and all that stuff. Um, okay, no. Okay, here's another one. This one has a few questions. So, what books or resources do you hope to purchase next? Um, there is a book that I want that I saw in Walmart twice and once at Dunkin' Donuts, and my mom ended up buying the Bible. Uh, it's Spiritual Warfare for Women. I can't remember the actual name. I will put... A photo here of that book this is a book that i really want um but the thing is the reason why i'm not getting it as of yet is because i already read fervent and i have fervent from priscilla shire and i feel like those books are the same kind of thing but my mom did purchase this book already so what i'm gonna do is read her book and if i feel the urge to highlight and take notes then i'm definitely gonna purchase it because Sunday I was going to purchase it but opted not to because i didn't know if i wanted it or not because it's so similar to fervent um the Women Thou Art Healed by T.D. Jakes devotional, a picture over here. I'll enter all the pictures here. That, I saw that devotional. It looks amazing. I want that. Um, Resolution for Women by Priscilla Shire is another one that I want. I want a lot of her studies. Um, she has a Gideon study, a Jonah study, Life Interrupted study that I want. Um, Beth Moore, I've heard, has some really good studies. So I definitely want to check out some of her stuff. Um, mm -mm. 
I do want a CSB She Reads Truth Bible. I really do. And I think I want it in the poppy linen or the gray linen. I haven't decided yet. But I want one of those. And I want one of Joyce Myers Bibles. I don't know which one yet. But I do want a Joyce Myers Bible. Um, I'm still debating on which one that I want. Because she has the Battlefield of the Mind Bible. And then I think it's the Everyday Living or something like that. She has some Bibles that I really want. So... I think at the top of my head, those are a few things that I really want. Um, but I definitely want to amplify Bible as well. So I hope that answers your questions on the ones that I want to purchase next. Um, the next question is, what books or chapters of the Bible do you plan to study next and how you choose? Um, so what I want to study next is the book of Ephesians as well as Isaiah. I'm really, really like stuck on those as well as... First and second Samuels, but I'm waiting to do that. Um, but definitely Isaiah and Ephesians are the next two books that I want to study in the Bible. Um, and how do you choose? I kind of mentioned this in a, another question. Um, it really depends on the urge that I feel. Um, I've had a really crazy urge to study the book of Isaiah as well as Ephesians. So because I've had those urges to study them, I'm going to study now. Study them. Now if I didn't have the urge, I would look through the list of things that I said I wanted to study um and pick like that. But when I have like a really or really crazy urge to study something I will and that has been the case with Ephesians and Isaiah. I actually should have started Isaiah and Ephesians probably a month ago or two months ago. And I just it's been pushed back because I'm still studying Luke. So I'm hoping to finish Luke this month because I want to start with Ephesians and Isaiah in February. So I hope that answers the question. Um, do you have a prayer journal or a prayer binder? I do have a prayer journal. And the one I'm using right now is from Our Daily Bread. They serve they um have a lot of these like journal kind of styled books from Our Daily Bread, which I love. I have so many that I'm actually going to be giving away soon. But, um, yeah, I do have a prayer journal. I prefer to journal out my prayers. But I also have a faith binder journal that I use where I put prayers in. So here is one of them. This is my rose gold um, faith journal. And this, as well as the inserts, come from Doki Book, which I'll leave a link down below. It is the Doki Book prayer journal Um the binder setup with the rose gold rings and then the disc agenda doki book with the rose gold thing but um i do have a section in here strictly for prayer this first section is for prayer and i have um prayers written in here personal prayers prayers i found online that i like um so i do have that and then i have another faith journal but it's a binder like this and I have a prayer section in here where I have prayers that I actually printed out um so this one is like a prayer for first thing in the morning and I just have a lot of prayers that are printed out that I like to read every now and then so I have both but I specifically love to use my prayer journal because this is more personal for me whereas the other two I have things that I either find on the internet or print out so I have both um, how did you come to the way you study now? Have you ever followed a formatted study with questions laid out? So how did I come to the way that I study now? Honestly, it was because I bought a journaling Bible. And I saw a lot of videos on journaling Bible, but they were always more so on like the art journaling in your Bible. And I personally feel convicted drawing in my Bible. I've tried it and I felt terrible. I get mad when I look up those pages because it's like... I don't want to do it like that. And what I had to come to understand, sorry, what I had to come to understand with the journaling Bibles is that it's called a journaling Bible and it has lines on the side with wide margins, too bright. So I like to journal. I love writing. So I figured why not journal out my thoughts as I write, I mean, as I study the word of God. So that's basically how I com came to that, to the way that I study now. Sorry. Um, and have I ever followed a formatted study with questions laid out? Yes. Um, I do Bible studies with um, actual workbooks. Um, some of my favorite ones are Goliath Must Fall. Another one is The Armor of God, which I'm currently doing. Life Interrupted. No, sorry. That's not it. Um, uninvited by 
Lisa Turkis. Um, I have a bunch that I really like. Um, I'm going to do a video on those soon. But, yeah, I have done it like that. And um, when I also study, I used to do, like, the different study methods, which are, like, feast and um, the soap method and stuff like that, which I'll have a video on the different type of methods and how you can use them. Um, do you listen to any pastors on YouTube? Yes, I love listening to T.D. Jakes. Um, if you guys don't know who he is, I mean, he's Pastor T.D. Jakes. He's amazing. Bishop T.D. Jakes, sorry. He's amazing. Um, Heather Lindsay, I don't believe she's a pastor, but she is a first lady. So I love listening to Heather Lindsay, as well as her husband, Cornelius Lindsay. Um, I think those are the only three pastors. I mean, I listen to Transformation Church as well. I don't know if they're, like, all pastors or whatever, so I don't know if that counts, but those are the pastors. Um, what are some of your favorite YouTube channels? Oh my god, okay. I'm gonna actually open up the YouTube app so I can tell you guys. So, definitely for sure, it's Cornelius Lindsay as well as his wife, Heather Lindsay. They both have separate channels. Their channels are amazing. T.D. Jake's channel is amazing. Joyce Meyer's channel is amazing. Um, it's Joyce Meyer's is actually Joyce Meyer Ministries. Love her channel. Um, I'm just going through. Morgan Tracy J is phenomenal. She is phenomenal, you guys. Definitely check out her channel. Got a link down below. Anna Womanstein is amazing. She does a lot of scripture journaling videos, which I like. Um, just Loves Life. I love her faith journal videos because they're really amazing. Tanya M. Andrews, you guys know her on Instagram as well, most likely. She's phenomenal. Crowned in Faith is out of this world you guys out of this world phenomenal um shelby coffee and bible time nora conrad i don't know if she's still posting her bible study videos but she did a bible study on ruth and i did it along with her she's amazing leah's essence is awesome kim cash tate she's actually the author of cling i freaking love this lady she is amazing she's actually doing bible study called cling she did first samuels and now they're on second samuel definitely her um oh my god you guys i'm just looking i'm looking i'm looking the bible project i mean who doesn't love the bible project they do animations of like bible stories and stuff like that love them you also have transformation church um oh my god you guys there are so many um, I heard about Anointed Fire. I haven't watched her videos yet, but um, I do have her on YouTube, and I'm going to check her out. So I'm going to mention her because I'm not 100% sure just yet, but definitely check her out. Um, Carla Cannon. Oh, my God. I love Miss Carla Cannon. She is phenomenal. She does a lot of Periscope videos, but she has been uploading her Periscope videos onto YouTube. She's, she's a woman of God, you guys. I did her fervent Bible study earlier last year. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um... Going Beyond Ministries, which is from Priscilla, Priscilla Shire. Um, they're amazing. Joseph Solomon, I love him. His is Chase Scott TV. He is amazing. Um, and Clarence Harden. Um, he does a lot of Bible study videos. I believe he's a pastor. Um, he's a pastor or a bishop. I can't remember. I think he's a pastor, but he does a lot of Bible study videos. I used to watch them a lot. I haven't watched him in a while, but I think he's currently doing a study on, what is it? Kings. Yeah, he's currently doing a study on Kings, and he just finished up Mark. So, um, yeah. Those are a few of them. That's a long list. So, I'll leave links down below to all of those people, because I love them. Um, what's the other question? Okay. So, now I'm going to move on to the ones that I had to write down because, yeah. Okay, so, how did you start? What was your motivation besides a closer walk? Um, honestly, there was just a click in my heart that I wanted to have a closer walk. Not even just a closer walk, but I just wanted to have more time with God. I wanted to really understand the word for myself because I grew up in church and one thing about church that I love was Sunday school Sunday school was like my favorite thing as a kid even as a teenager because I loved you know the little hand the little books that they would give out the Sunday school books and answering the question and having homework I adored that part um now in church reading the Bible I would get I would lose my attention 
to it because I didn't really care for the King James Version. I, I have grown up on the King James Version. I do understand it, but I didn't care for it as a kid. And even now, I don't really care much for it, but I do read it um, alongside my new King James translation. But, um, yeah, I, I don't, honestly, there was just a click in my heart. My mom purchased my Bible, I believe, in 2016, um, if I'm not mistaken. So, when she was on the ChristianBook.com website, I was like, I want a Bible. She bought the Bible for me, and, you know, I got it, I started reading it, it was cool, but... It was in 2017 that something really just clicked in me. And I was like, I need to study the word. I need to just really have this word embedded in my heart, in my mind, in my soul, in my spirit, and feed my spirit daily. Just because I was dealing with a lot of depression. I was dealing with a lot of anger issues. And um, nothing could satisfy me like God and Jesus could. So I felt that I needed to just dive in. So that's really how I started doing these studies on my own and really diving in on my own what was the first book you studied gospel of john hands down the best the best study i've done now i did do esther and ruth um honestly before the gospel of john but i always say the gospel of john because it was phenomenal i did ruth with nora conrad and or was it esther I know I did Ruth for sure with Nora Conrad. Um, I don't know if it was Esther that I did with somebody else or if I did that on my own. I can't remember. But, um, yeah, the Gospel of John, hands down. The best study I've ever done. I had notes for days, you guys. No, notes for days. Notes for days. Um, where and how do I begin? And I guess that means how do you begin studying the Bible and where? Um... Really, how do you begin is just you having a desire to want to study the word. Um, because being forced to study the word is not going to help you. you. You really have to have a desire and a want to study the word of God. And when you do have that desire and want to study the word of God, then you get a Bible or two. Or if you have a Bible, you read it. Now, there are reading plans you can follow. There are Bible studies you can do. It really just depends. But I always and will forever recommend... That if you're just starting out studying the Bible, whether you're a, a new believer, a mature believer, old, young, however, definitely start with the Gospel of John. Because the Gospel of John is just, it's amazing. It really goes into the, the work and ministry of Christ, um, his life, resurrection, his death, all of that. It's its really phenomenal. And it, it, it will change your life when you study the Gospel of John. That's why the first Bible study I do on YouTube will be the Gospel of John because I really think that's a key book to study. Reading versus studying the Bible. Um, okay. I think reading and, and studying are two different things. Reading the Bible is just like, okay, I'm going to read the scripture, call it a day. Studying the Bible is like, I'm going to read the scripture, I'm going to meditate on it, I'm going to read it again, underline, highlight, take notes, apply it, write down things, and then pray about it. That's the difference to me in my mind. Bible study versus Bible journaling. Okay. I think there's two different ways you can journal in your Bible. There is the art journaling that a lot of people do in their Bible. And then there's like journaling as you study, which is the kind of thing that I do that you guys have seen on my channel. Um, now, Bible study is a lot more in depth than Bible journaling. And in the sense of this question, I think it's more so of like studying, taking notes in a journaling format versus journaling in the art format. So, I mean... There's nothing wrong with those out there who do the art journaling in their Bibles. I personally feel convicted, so I feel like it depends on you. Me, more so, I prefer to actually write my notes out because it allows me to really grasp and understand the word that I'm reading. It allows it to really be infused in my heart and my mind and allows me to really be able to apply it to my life versus just drawing out a picture, if that makes sense. What Bible and translation to use? Um, what Bible? It really just depends on the translation, honestly, because there are different translations for specific companies. Like, Tindu does the NLT, 
um, Crossway does the ESV. Now, Thomas Nelson does a bunch of different translations, so it really depends on the Bible. Um, I have so many Bibles. If you guys don't know, um, I'll leave, or you can actually click the eye on the screen to my Bible collection video. I have so many different Bibles and a lot of translations. It really depends. I would recommend two translations. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I need some water. Okay, so. I do recommend two translations. I definitely recommend the King James Version because it's the solid basis of a Bible. And then I would recommend either the New King James or the ESV translation. Because the ESV is very basic and simple. And then the New King James is similar to the King James, but it doesn't have the wither, the the and all that craziness. Um, and I don't mean craziness in a crazy way. That just sounds so wrong. But yeah, you guys get it. Now, I do have an NLT Bible. I got my sister an NIV Bible. I have HCSB. I like those Bibles, but my three favorite are the King James, the New King James, and the ESV. So, definitely a King James Bible is one, and then the secondary one can be a New King James or an ESV. You do have the option of the NLT and all that other things. But the reason why I say the New King James is because it doesn't lose any of the scriptures in the Bible. There are Bibles who have taken where they have taken out certain scriptures and certain verses from the Bible, which is not good. And I'm gonna do a video all about that because I'm gonna do a comparison for you guys. Um the next question is do I need a journaling Bible? What are alternatives? No, you don't need a journaling Bible. I did not have a journaling Bible for a while. The alternative, you guys, are... Where is it? Just a plain old composition notebook. I used this one when I did my study um, with Sarah Kuntz on the Worthy of the Calling. All you need is a regular composition notebook. Like, I've filled out a lot of these pages. And this is on the book of Ephesians. She went through, she did 31 days, a 31 day study on the book of Ephesians. And um, this is what I used on that 31 day study. So you don't need a journaling Bible. Um, the next thing I did was, I don't know why that's out. Oh, it's not out. I'm going to try to take them out. But um, here we go. You can use printers, um, computer. I did the fervent study and I typed up my notes, printed them out. And if you don't have that, all you really need is paper, like just regular paper. Now I had a journal that was that had perforated sheets, so I basically would just rip the pages out, punch holes, and write my notes. And these were all the notes that I had on John. This was the Gospel according to John. I have it also for my Proverbs 31 study that I did on the Proverbs 31 woman. And I also have it for Romans because I didn't get my journaling Bible until I wanted to study um, Ruth and Esther. So, you know, for the Gospel of John and for Romans, I had to do on paper. And even when I got it, I did my um, I did take notes on paper for the other ones if I can get it out. So like, here's my notes from Ruth, my notes from Esther, but my notes are definitely still in my journaling Bible. So you do not need a journaling Bible. All you really need is paper or a computer if you have one with a printer. That's honestly all you really need um to journal. I mean. A journaling Bible is more easier because you have everything in one place. You don't have to get a separate book or anything to write your notes. But no, you do not need a journaling Bible. You really just need a notebook, some paper, whatever to put your notes in. That's honestly all you need. That's how I started. And then when I was like, I wanted a journaling Bible, I got one. And it took me a while to understand how to use it. Because I've showed you guys, I think, before. But um, when I first got this, I was like, let me try out the whole art journaling thing. And this is one of them that I did. Not, you know, that crazy because I wasn't into the whole drawing. And then you have this one here. And I have another one here. That I literally just stuck the sticker love there and then wrote some notes. But like, 
I didn't like that, so I decided that I was just going to, oh, and that's what I did. So, yeah, you definitely don't need a journaling Bible. You just need a Bible itself and some pen and paper. Um, can you share how you study and journal in your Bible? I did. I do have a how I study in my journaling Bible video, which you can check. click the eye on the screen or you can actually click the link below. Um, and I'm so sorry this video is so long, you guys, but I got a lot of questions. So, yeah. Um, washi tape and stickers. I guess this person is asking me what I think about them. I think it, they're fine. I use washi tape in my Bible to um, let me know the like the books of the Bible because I don't want to put tabs in this Bible. So like I know that this is the beginning of Psalms here. Then we have the pink one, which is the beginning of Proverbs. We have this other pink one, which I believe is Song of Songs. Yeah, like, Song of Songs. So, like, I use washi tape to tab off um, the beginning of a book of the Bible. And I do put stickers as well. Let me see if I can find anywhere I put stickers. I think stickers are great for, like, empty space. Like, when I have white space on my pages. But I would have to actually find one for you guys because... I don't know. I don't know. If there, are there any in here? Sorry, you guys. I'm just flipping through to see if I can find one. Because I know I have stickers in here. I just don't know where I put them in. Okay, so like here, I put a sticker from the Happy Planner Faith Pack. And it's Prayer Changes Things. And then I wrote a prayer here. Um, So I think stickers are fine. I put one here for Noted. Stickers are perfectly fine. Um, There's nothing wrong with using stickers. I think I've, yeah, I use stickers in Luke as well. Let me see. I need to put a sticker here, actually. And there. Yeah, there's places where I like stick stickers. Like here, I put rejoice and then another sticker here. So I think stickers are fine. There's nothing wrong with stickers or washi tape. Um, I just don't go overboard with the stickers. The stickers have to correlate with what I studied. Um, and the washi tape I use strictly just to mark off the new book of about the new book that I'm reading. I mean, the new book. In the Bible, if that makes sense. What method do you use to take notes in your Bible? I answer this. Um, I just journal. Like I don't. If you guys want to know how I do it, just check out the how I journal in my how I study in my Bible journal, as well as the um, study with me video that I did, because that showed you how I do it. I really just write my thoughts of what the scripture says, or break down the scripture if need be to find words that's really how i go about it a good study bible with good commentary okay so good study bibles i have two um now these are more of the women-based study bibles because i do prefer women's study bibles but they do have these in just basic study bible formats that are unisex so the first one that i have here is the Women's Study Bible, the King James Version Signature Series from Thomas Nelson. It comes in this gorgeous box. And it is written by two awesome women. And I actually have mine in my Bible bag. So I'm just going to take it out of the Bible bag. I got tissue in my bag from when I was crying in church, you guys. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to get all this in here. So, here is the Bible itself. Um, there will be a review coming on this Bible soon. But it's the Women's Study Bible from Thomas Nelson in the King James Version. And I like this. This Bible and the next one I'm going to show you guys are written. Not written, but like edited by um, the same people. They are Dortha Kelly Patterson and Rhonda Harrison Kelly. And there's definitely commentary in these in the Bible. At the bottom, if you guys can see the commentary. Um, but what I like about the commentary in this Bible, as well as the next one I'm going to show you guys, is that the commentary is more so factual commentary. It's not like more so what they think or believe. They give you definitions, Greek definitions. Um, they reference you to other scriptures. They tell you about 
different things that happened in that time um, about the customs. They really give you factual information about the timing, setting, location, and the people in the Bible in reference to other scriptures, which is why I love the commentary in here because I know some commentary is very um, opinionated, but the commentary in here is not. So that's this one from Thomas Nelson in the King James Version. And the next one I have is by the, by the two same ladies, Dorothy, Dorothy and Rhonda. But um, this one is the Study Bible for Women from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. So it's basically the HCSB Study Bible, but this one is more so geared towards women. And it looks like this. Of course, I got mine in this cute girly color. It's the lavender and blush with the silver on it and um yeah it's written by the same women just the commentary is written on the side margins and not the bottom because on the bottom they give you word studies as well as um references to other scriptures and definitions and stuff like that so if you're a woman i would say those two bibles if you're not a woman you're a man i would say um the thomas Nelson study bible in the kgb or the hbc hcsb study bible um, how do I pray? Um, my prayer journal. Honestly, I use my prayer journal. Um, I do pray out loud with my son every now and then because he loves to pray. My son is going to be four soon. Um, and he actually loves praying. I got him into praying and he actually prays more than me, which is crazy. But, um, yeah, my prayer journal is what I do. And I literally just write out a prayer. It's nothing crazy. You guys would have seen this prayer if you saw my How I Do My Devotional Time video. Um, this is a prayer that I wrote out. And I just write my prayers out. Nothing crazy. Sometimes they're like three pages. Sometimes they're not even half a page. Like, the one I did on the 18th is this small. And then the one yesterday, I didn't even get a chance to finish, so it's this short. Like, some prayers are short, some prayers are long, but I prefer to journal out and write my prayers and then speak out after I've written them. Um, would I, would you ever do a full Bible study video where you can, where we can all study together with you? Yes. Um, I'm definitely going to do those. I do have study with me videos coming, which will basically be me studying whatever I'm studying in the Bible and showing you guys how I study. But I will be doing a Bible study on the book of John or rather the gospel of John coming soon. I'm trying to get everything together. Um, because I am going to be doing it with you guys on screen. You're going to see how I study, how I take my notes. And um, I'm going to do the study right along with you guys. And it might be once a week that a video will go up. Um, but I'm working on having that up hopefully by the middle or end of February, early March. Still working out the kinks and things like that. Um, because I don't know if I want to have a packet with it or not with questions. I really haven't decided how I'm going to format it, but definitely Gospel of John study is coming soon. And then I'm also going to be doing Ruth and Esther for my ladies out there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So those are all of the questions that I got on Instagram. And um, I am so sorry this video is so long. I didn't want it to go for 30 minutes, but it did. But um, yeah, so if you guys here on YouTube have any questions for me, just leave them down below in the comment section. I'll probably do a part two in february for you guys once i get enough questions um and that is pretty much it for this video so thank you to all the new subscribers um thank you to my old subscribers to my instagram followers because a lot of you guys are coming from instagram so thank you for that um i think that's pretty much it i will be having a giveaway coming soon because i did not expect to have this many subscribers so quickly so I will be having a giveaway here on YouTube as well as on my Instagram. Um, I'm probably going to do four winners here, two on, two here on YouTube and two on Instagram. Um, so I'm going to try to get all that together probably after after Valentine's Day. Um, I'm going to start that giveaway. Or I'll probably start it in March up until Valentine. I don't know. It'll be sometime in February that the giveaway is going to happen. So I'll do a separate video on the giveaway. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So follow me on Instagram, follow me on Pinterest. I do have a Pinterest account now where you guys can see different studies and stuff like that that I like. Um, you can tweet me if you need to. I have a Facebook page. I suck with the Facebook and the Twitter, but I'm trying to get back into them. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. So I'll definitely see you guys in the next video, and thank you again. Bye!